rotting beams, busted brick, and battlefield ruins. But to a civil engineer, this place tells a story. Welcome to Haunt Showdown, where every broken wall has something to say. We are starting off right here at what looks like the broken entrance to an old barracks or fort. But before heading inside, let's take a walk around the perimeter and get a closer look at the exterior. Looking at this wooden barrier, which appears to be a timber palisade wall, the material is likely pine or cypress, both common choices but prone to decay in humid environments if left untreated. Visually, the wood shows signs of weathering, warping, and darkening classic indicators of prolonged moisture exposure. Interestingly, we can also see metal sheets and reinforcement bars incorporated into the structure. These elements help resist tension forces and may have been added as a makeshift reinforcement to prolong the wall's stability. Let's take a closer look at this wall. At first glance, the brickwork might resemble something like a Flemish or English bond pattern, both traditional methods of laying bricks. But look closely and you'll notice some bricks are sticking out, almost like they have been pushed from behind. At first glance, this might seem intentional, part of the design, or just the result of old construction techniques. But there's actually something more going on here. There's no pattern to it, just random bricks shifting out of place. This usually points to something structural, like the ground underneath the wall, moving over time. This fort sits in a swampy, muddy ground which is soft and doesn't hold weight very well. Over time, the soil can sink in some areas more than others, causing the wall to lean, shift, or crack. On top of that, all the moisture in the ground builds up pressure against the base of the wall. With no solid foundation or drainage to handle it, the bricks start to get pushed out. Here we've got a small cabin near the shoreline. And if you look closely, you'll notice that it's leaning slightly towards the back. That's a subtle sign of movement over time, likely due to the way that it is supported. This structure sits right along the water's edge, which is a tricky spot for any kind of foundation. Ideally, a building like this should be resting on a piling foundation, a system where long posts or columns are driven deep into the ground to reach more stable layers beneath the soft soil. Piles help transfer the weight of the structure down to a firmer ground, keeping it level and preventing it from sinking or tilting, especially in areas like this where the soil near the shore is loose and waterlogged. Right here nearby the tilted cabin, we can see what looks like an early version of a marine crane. These types of cranes are typically used near docks or jetties to load and unload cargo from boats. They're designed to lift heavy materials across the water's edge and onto land, or vice versa. But if we take a closer look, the water level here seems too shallow for a boat to approach safely. For this crane to be functional, boats would either need to wait for high tide to get close enough, or there would be a need for some excavations done along the shoreline to deepen the seabed that would allow access even during low tide conditions. Now over here, we've got a particularly interesting section of the wall, a damaged corner that looks like it's taken some serious impact. You'll notice patterns along the surface that resemble cannon fire, likely part of the environmental storytelling to show this fort has seen battle. This break in the wall gives us a rare cross-section view of how the fort was built. You can clearly see the outer face made of brick, most likely soft red clay bricks which were common in older frontier structures because they were cheap and locally sourced. From this exposed edge, we can count around two to three layers of bricks forming the outer shell. But what's more interesting is what's behind them. The interior doesn't seem to be a solid brick. Rather, it looks like it is filled with rubble or possibly loosely packed stone and mortar. That would make this kind of composite wall where the bricks give it shape and protection, while the inner fill adds mass without much structural integrity. This kind of construction would have been faster and more economical at the time, but not very durable in the long run, especially under attack or constant exposure to weather. And now we are seeing the effects, crumbling edges, brick displacement, and erosion on the softer inner core. 
Let us now go into the inner parts of this structure. Now that we are inside coming from the outer walls of Fort Karmic, we are in what looks like a transitional courtyard, an open zone between the defensive perimeter and the inner barracks. Functionally, this area acts as a buffer and a space for practical use, likely for training or holding supplies. Here we see a blasted area of the wall which exposes the inner bits of layers. This kind of damage, whether caused by a cannon fire or explosion, actually gives us a rare view into how the wall was built. You'll see the outermost surface is made of light-colored brick layer. It's cleaner and more uniform than the rest, probably added for appearance or as a protective facade. Right behind resembles a maroon-colored stonework layer. Less refined, more rugged, this acts as a buffer or core filler. It gives the wall bulk and may help with insulation or basic shock absorption, but it's not load-bearing on its own. And finally, at the deepest point, you can spot the reddish clay bricks. These are the real backbone of the wall, the load-bearing material. Seeing all three layers exposed like this gives us insight into how this structure was built. Form, function, and strength all working together but it also shows how damage can compromise that system. Once the outer layer is breached, moisture and stress can easily work their way in, weakening everything beneath. Now here's a smart piece of frontier engineering. This lift system connects the roof of the barracks to the upper walkway of the fort's outer wall. It's a manually operated hoist, most likely used for moving supplies or weapons between levels without using the interior staircases. This setup looks basic but effective. This method is all about reducing effort through mechanical advantage. Even without complex technology, using a pulley allows a person to lift heavier items with less force, perfect for moving gear quickly up to the walls during a firefight or a supply run. Structurally, it's supported by timber framing anchored into the roof beams and wall. If the timber is untreated, it needs regular maintenance or replacement due to weathering or rot. The rope, possibly hemp or jute, would have a high risk of fraying, especially in this humid environment. You'll notice there are diagonal braces supporting one side of the elevator frame, but on the opposite side, that same brace appears to be broken or missing. Without it, the structure becomes less stable during lifts, which could cause wobbling or even reduce how much weight it can safely handle. Have you ever had one of those dreams where you fell from the sky? If you're enjoying this video, click that subscribe button now and you might sleep better tonight. Inside the barracks, we can see a shift from outer defenses to a more utilitarian interiors. The walls are made of clay bricks, simple, breathable, and locally sourced. Now take a look at this window tall, narrow, and vertically aligned. These aren't here for views or comfort. From a structural point of view, these vertical slits help reduce wall openings while still allowing light and air. Historically, they also serve defensive purposes, limiting incoming projectiles and giving occupants a way to see or shoot out with cover. For brick construction, this shape also keeps the wall integrity higher than a square or wide opening. Inside the sleeping quarters, you'll see stacked wooden bunk beds built from rough planks, likely using whatever wood was easiest to find nearby. They're not fancy, but they get the job done. Looking up, you'll notice the exposed wooden beams running across the ceiling. We can already see signs of aging and cracks in the wood. These beams had to carry not just the weight of the roof itself, but also the extra weight from rain, wind, and whatever else nature throws at it. Without proper upkeep, even a small damage on the materials could become a serious issue over time. This barrack sits on silty ground, a tricky base for any structure. Normally, civil engineers would need a full geotechnical investigation before laying a single slab of concrete. Now from soft soils to steep slopes, in this video right here, we explore Banapur in Far Cry 4, a hillside village that shows how people build smart with natural terrain. Check it out.